It was a cold winter day back in 1864 when Bill Skeeto was walking along the banks of this Choctawhatchee River here near the outskirts of Newton. Had been into town to get some medicine for his wife. He'd been sick a long time. And it was right here on this spot that Bill Skeeto was accosted by some men that he thought were his friends. And it's right here on this spot that he was killed and that his ghost still lingers in the hole that won't stay filled. It's one of Alabama's finest ghost stories. This hole, uh, you see about that big around and about that deep. It's been here since that November day of 1864. And you can fill it with dirt or trash or anything you want to put in it. Go away, stay a little while, come back, and you find it swept out clean. Now, I don't know what sweeps that hole out clean. So I had filled it and had it swept. But the people who live around this community, this community of Newton, will tell you that it is the ghost of Bill Skeeto who keeps that hole swept out. And they'll tell you the tragic story of Bill Skeeto. So I said he was a Methodist preacher. He had come from the Carolinas down into southeast Alabama, homesteaded some land was preaching at five little Methodist churches. Rumblings of war between the states came along and upset him tremendously. He did not believe that this country should be divided and he was not a slave owner. And he spoke out against the Confederacy and he lost a lot of friends. And his churches said, if you feel like that, you need to come back here and preach anymore. But as the war went on, Bill Skeeto got drafted into the Confederate Army, and people wondered if he would respond to that draft, feeling the way that he did. But when the call came for service, he did join a unit and was serving with infantry up in Virginia. And one day he got a letter that said, if you want to see your wife alive, you better come home quickly because she's very sick. Well, Bill Skeeto loved his wife very much. And he knew there was nobody to take care of her. So he did what was often done in those days. He paid a substitute to take his place in the army so he could go back down to Newton to see about his wife. Well, when he got home, he found that she really was very ill, had pneumonia. And back in those days, we had no miracle drugs to help in curing such illnesses. And he had to stay a long time nursing her. And he stayed so long, people began to talk about him. They began to say first, uh, you know, Miss Skeeto's not really that sick, and Brother Bill ought to go on back and join his army unit. And then people began to say, you know, he's a coward, he's yellow, he's just scared to fight, using his wife an excuse. And then they began to say the worst thing that they could have said about a man in that time. They began to say, Bill Skeeto has deserted from the Confederate Army. He's a deserter. He's a deserter. And that little rumor spread around, and it reached the ears of a man named Captain Berea. And Captain Berea was in charge of the home guard, and he took his duties seriously. He and his group were supposed to keep law and order in the community and also to be on the lookout for anybody who tried to slip off from the Confederate Army. But when Captain Berea heard that rumor, he said, well, he may be a Methodist preacher, but we'll punish him properly. So one cold day when Bill Skeeto had been into Newton to get some medicine for his wife, and walking home along the banks of the Choctahatchee River here, carrying that bottle of medicine in his hand, he met a man on that path who greeted him very cordially. He said, good morning, Brother Skeeto, isn't it cold? I hope your wife's feeling better. Well, nobody had said anything friendly to Bill Skeeto in a long time. And he was pleased that this man was interested about how his wife was. 
And so he began to tell him that his wife was improving. And all of a sudden, out from the bushes behind him, there jumped five men. And they grabbed Bill Skeeto and they tied his hands behind his back and tied his feet together. They threw him down there in that dirt. And they began to kiss him and curse him and abuse him and say, Bill Skeeto, we're going to hang you. You're a deserter. And Bill Skeeto said, but I'm not a deserter. I paid a man to take my place in the army. And I'm going back just as soon as my wife is able for me to leave. If you hang me here, you'll never forget this spot. But they wouldn't listen to him. And they kept on taunting him and abusing him. And finally, they threw him in the back of a buggy. Drove that buggy up under a large oak tree. And in that buggy, there was a rope. A long, thick rope that had a noose tied in one end of it. And they slipped that noose over Bill Skeeto's head and threw the other end over a big limb there on that oak tree. They said to him, is there anything you want to say before you die? And Bill Skeeto said, I'm innocent. And if you hang me here, you will never forget this spot. And then he began to pray for those men who were going to take his life. He knew each one of them. He looked in the men's face and called them by name and said, God, please forgive them. And all oh, that hurt their consciences. So they wanted to get this ugly thing over with in a hurry. And one of them reached down and he picked up a stick and he hit the horse a lick with that stick. And that horse bolted and jerked Bill Skeeto out of that buggy and should have broken his neck. But those men had forgotten how tall Bill Skeeto was, over six feet tall. And he was so tall that his toes touched the ground. Just enough to keep that noose from tightening around his neck. But in that group of men, there was a man named George Eccles who was crippled. He walked with a crutch. And George Eccles quickly took his crutch and he used it like a shovel to dig a hole under Bill Skeeto's feet so that his toes could not touch the ground. And then that noose tightened around his neck, and he died there in the woods that December day. They say those men got in the buggy, and they rode to the Skeeto house, and stopped at the front gate, and one of them called out, Hey, Miss Skeeto, if you've been wondering where your husband is, you'll find him hanging from that tree down near the river. And they say Miss Skeeto got up out of her sick bed, and she had to walk five miles before she could find anybody who would go with her to help her cut her husband's body down and prepare it for burial. This also may be where some of the men who took his life that day in 1864 buried. They say all of those men met tragic deaths. One was riding his horse one day, a still day, calm day, and a tree limb fell and hit him on the head and killed him. One went down into a swamp looking for some lost cattle and got in quicksand and met his death there. One was struck by lightning. One was killed when he fell from his mule that was running away. The others also met tragic deaths. I don't recall exactly how. But the people in this area say it's, you know, they did a bad thing. They took the life of an innocent man. If you know someone in Newton, they'll take you out and show you the spot where Bill Skeeto was hanged. And they'll tell you the story of how for more than 130 years that hole that was dug by the crutch of a cripple where Bill Skeeto was hanged was impossible to fill. You could go there and put dirt and leaves and trash in it and go away and stay a little while and come back and you find it swept out clean. 
And they would say, don't you remember? Bill Skeeto said, I'm innocent. And if you hang me here, you'll never forget this spot. And the whole thing about that big, about that deep, hundreds of people came through the years and filled that hole. Go away and stay a little while and come back and find it swept out. Even people who told of spending the night there at the hole, putting their bedroll on top of it, after they had filled it, of course, with dirt and trash, waking up the next morning to find the hole swept out clean. One of Newton's claims to fame, the hanging spot, Bill Skeeto, a Methodist preacher.